Right, first and foremost, I want to give all honours and praises and glory belongs to my Lord and Saviour. His name is Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Muhammad Kaakwadash. The name of the Heavenly Father is Yahweh. Son's name is Yahweh Shai. In who I reverence and honours the apostles that have in the Holy Spirit and to the hopeful elect across the globe and to the few, the very few brothers and sisters that are listening and learning, right, in the hopes of being saved within these last days. All right. This lesson is going to be called, you had a faith, faithless generation and you had a faithful generation. You had one that was concerned with the carnal meat and you had another that was concerned with what? Yahabashai, which was the spiritual meat, which was the spiritual bread. So Lord of willingness to be edifying and everything we're going to go into is going to be an example of those that believed and those that did not believe. We're going to start off on Hebrews and Lord willing this to be edifying to those that need to hear this. And we can take something, at the end of this lesson we can take something from it. Because at the end of the day, when Yahavashai comes back, he's going to be concerned with those that had faith. What, what did you do for him? What did you do? Did you, did you repent? Did you have faith? You're not going to be able to point the fingers at anybody else. It's going to be, did you repent? Let's go to Hebrews 3. And we're going to jump straight to verse. So that's verse 6. Excuse me just a minute. But Mashiach, a son over his own house, right? And this is supposed to be a household of faith. And you have the house, which is the temple, right? Whose house are we? It's a house, it's a body. If we hold fast the confidence and rejoicing of the hope firm unto the end. So it's about holding fast the confidence. The same confidence you had when you first heard about this truth, right? That has to remain, right? Rejoicing in the hope, right? So the scriptures do talk about hope, the hope we have in your house, firm. So we've got to stand firm unto the end. Okay, wherefore, as the Holy Spirit saith to today, if you will hear his voice, in a time of what? The wilderness. Harden not your hearts. Our people harden their minds towards your house, in the provocation as in the provocation in the day of the temptation in the wilderness right they were provoking Yahabashai in the wilderness for what was it 40 was it 40 years through the unbelief that provoked Yahabashai when your fathers tempted me proved me and saw my works 40 years they were tempting Yahabashai through what through the working of what of miracles 40 years, all types of miracles are being done by Yahavashai. Wherefore was I grieved, upset with that generation? So it was the generation. And this generation ain't talking about no other generation except from Israel. It's not talking about Esau. Okay. I was grieved with that generation. There's a particular generation of Israelites Yahavashai was grieved with. And said... They do always err in their heart, right? Divert the part from the Lord in their hearts and have not known my ways. So there's Israelites that don't, they don't know the ways of Yahabashai. They know the ways of the flesh on how to earn more money, the physical things. So the show shall I swear my wrath, they shall not enter into my rest, the promised land. Take heed therefore, brethren, lest there be any of you an evil heart of unbelief. This is key. Take heed, lest there be the evil heart of unbelief. And this is happening right now as I'm speaking. You've got men with evil demonic spirits, the spirit of soul. That's an evil heart. An evil heart means mind. Heart means love. So you've got men with an evil mind, mind because they're not focused on your shy. And what does it really boil down to? Who's of the elect? Who's of the house of David and who's of the house of Saul? 
the non-elect. Let's any of you be, bear me just a minute. In, let's read that again. Take heed, brethren, as there be any of you an evil heart of unbelief. It's so easy for that to happen if you're not focused, if you're not reading, if you're not paying attention to what's going on. In departing from the living power. And that's how brothers slowly start to depart. And the next thing they, they start, you just don't see them anymore. You might see them now and then. But there's no longer that same passion. There's no longer that same drive. Departing from the living power, which is your house, but exhort one another daily. And sometimes ex exhorting, it's not always going to be come across as nice. Right? While it is called today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. Because it's easy to go off. So easy, because you're surrounded by sin. But it's less likely if you're doing what the scriptures say. Okay. Lest any of you be hunted for the deceitfulness of sin, because sin is deceitful. Right? For we are made partakers of Mashiach, of what his sufferings, and we hold the beginning. If we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast unto the end. So you've got the, the beginning of that confidence that you had when you heard about this truth. It has to remain. Now you have faith. Satan's trying to take that faith every single day. Why it is said, 1 verse 15, today if you will hear his voice, bear me just a minute. Alright, today if you will hear his voice, harden not your hearts. And that's what our people done in the wilderness. As in a provocation. For some when they had heard did provoke. How about not all came out by Egypt, by Moses, not all came out. Right? Most of them had to die there in the wilderness. But with whom he was grieved 40 years. <coughs> Excuse me, 40 years. Was it not with them that had sinned whose carcasses fell in the wilderness? And to whom swear he that should not enter into his rest, but to them that believe not. It was those that believed not that did not enter into that rest. They did not enter into the promised land of Canaan. All, all down to doubt. Okay. Unbelief. But to them that believe not, so we see that they could not enter in because of unbelief. So when you read the whole chapter of Hebrews 3, it goes into the belief and Hebrews 4, the unbelief of particular Israelites that could not enter into the land because of their doubt, because of their unbelief. And it's the same thing again today. We're in the wilderness. Spiritually, we are in that wilderness. And only a few are going to make it out of that wilderness and into the promised land. Okay. Which is Canaan. Okay. So now we went to that. We're going to go to Psalms, Baba Kasha. The Lord, Yahweh is pleased with faith. He delights in faith. Someone that's faithful. Someone that believes in him. Right? Not someone that claims to know all these scriptures, but not, not applying it, not acting upon it. We're going to go to Psalm 78. And we're going to start at, excuse me just a minute. Start at Psalm 78 and 5. For you have established a testimony in Jacob. You know Jacob represents Israel. Jacob's name was changed to Israel when he wrestled with the angel. And appointed a law in Israel, which commanded our fathers, right, that they should make them known to their children. All right, so you'd pass it down, it'd be a legacy of us, what, rehearsing the righteous acts, that the generation to come might know them. Even the children which should be born, and they would teach it to their children when they were older, who should arise and declare them to their children, that they might set their hope in Yahweh and not forget the works of the Most High. Don't forget about it. Okay. But keep his commandments. And might not be as their fathers. A stubborn. And rebellious generation. So it was said. Those that did not make it out of that promised land. That was an example of what stubbornness. And a rebellious generation. And who were they rebellious against? Yahabashai. A generation that set not their hearts aright. Didn't get their mind right. In other words, we're not repentant because it said they sinned. It doesn't tell us what was in that wilderness. But you can imagine there was temptations in that wilderness. Must have been idols. All types of things because they went through what different places. It was a wilderness. 
but they were still what sojourning. It doesn't say if there was idols, but we could. You just gotta use what your mind. There's probably idols, other things that they lusted after, physical things. And whose spirit was not steadfast in Yahweh Shai. The children of Ephraim, being armed and carrying bows, turned back in the day of battle. They kept not the covenant of the Most High and refused to walk in His law and forget forget His works and His wonders that He showed them. Marvelous things did He in the sight of their fathers in the land of Egypt in the field of Zoan. He divided the sea and caused them to pass through. Right? And He made the water to stand as a heap. Right? During the Red Sea, even the time of the Pharaoh. Right? And in the daytime also he led them by a cloud. The cloud was the chariots. And the night by a light of fire. So they were guided by what? The angels. Right? And he clave the rocks in the wilderness. Broke them. And gave them drink as out of the great depths. Right? And it's a fact. Within a lot of these rocks. Flint rocks. Mostly flint rocks. If you smash them against another rock or on the ground. What comes up? Water. Because they've been in what the waters the sea so long, so they're embedded, the water soaks into that stone. And that's why you see a constant thing with monkeys, they're so intelligent, they when they want water, they, they smash a stone and what comes out? Water. Alright, so that's what you have to done, open up the stones and what? Made a stream and clave the rocks in the wilderness and gave them drink as out of a great depth. He brought streams also out of the rock. And what do streams create? Rivers and cause waters to run down that rivers. Right? So everything was there and they sinned yet more against him by provoking the most high in the wilderness. So it says they were provoking him through their unbelief. And he tempted Yahweh in their heart by asking meat for their lust. Right? When it says asking meat for their lust, the physical things. But Yahweh was showing them, look, I'm showing you spiritual things here. I'm showing you miracles, but you're asking for the you're asking for the physical things. Yeah, they spake against Yahweh, Yahweh Shai. They said, Can the Most High furbish a table in the wilderness? Doubt. Didn't you just see the miracles he, he done prior to that? Verse 20 Behold, he smote the rock, but the waters gushed out and the streams ov overflowed. Can he give bread also? Can he provide flesh for his people? Of course he can. Look at the miracles he done prior to that. These were doubtful, this was a doubtful, unbelieving generation, regardless of the miracles they were shown. Therefore the Lord Jehoshua heard this, he heard the murmuring and was rough, angry, so a fire kindled against Jacob. And anger also came up against Israel. Right? Because they believed not in Jehoshua and trusted not in his salvation. You see how all this applied today as well? Though he had commanded the clouds from above and opened the doors of heaven for what? For rain. And had rained down manna upon them to eat. Manna is likened unto, um, apparently it was like, likened unto coriander seed. The taste, right? And rained down manna upon them to eat and had given them the corn of heaven. So he gave them that meat that they asked for. He sustained their physical needs but they were lacking spiritually. Man did eat angels' food. That's what it was called. He sent them meat to the full. He caused an east wind to blow in the heaven. And by his power, he brought in the south wind. Right? He rained flesh also upon them as dust. He, the feathered fowls like as the sand of the sea. <coughs> Excuse me. And he let it fall in the midst of their camp. Round about their habitation. So they did they eat and were filled. For he gave them their own desire. Key thing it said they did eat and were filled, and he gave them their own desire. What they desired, he gave them that, and he gave them over to their own desire. They were not desiring of Yahweh, they were desiring of the, the physical things, but they were not estranged from their lust. But their meat was while their meat was in their mouths, the wrath of Yahweh came upon them and slew the fattest of them. Right, so there was a lot of greedy individuals there. And smote down the chosen men of Israel. For all this they, they, they sinned still. And believed not for his wondrous works. Therefore the days did he consume in the vanity. The days they, they were consumed in vanity. Right? And the years in trouble. When he slew them. 
Then they sought him and they returned and inquired early of the Most High. So you had some that did return right, and inquired of Yahweh Shai. And they remember that the Most Yahweh Shai was their rock and the, and the high power, their redeemer. Nevertheless, they did flatter him with their mouth. Scripture says that in Isaiah, they draw nigh to me with their mouth, but their heart is far from me. Okay. And they lied unto him with their tongues. For their heart was not right with him. Their heart, their mind, their love was not right with Yahweh Shai. Neither were they steadfast in his covenant. Right. But being, but he being full of compassion forgave their iniquity. Some of them and destroyed them not. Yet many a time turned his anger away and did stir up his wrath. Okay. Did not stir up his wrath. For he remembered that they were but flesh and the wind that passed away and cometh not again. How often did they provoke him in the wilderness and grieve him in the desert? Yet they turned back and tempted Yahweh and limited the Holy One of Israel. So when you've got these lessons today about... Again, it's important that we bring out what's about to happen because that's a part of prophecy. But you've got men that are pushing this spirit of doubt. What are we going to do? What are we going to do? What are we going to do? That's unpleasing to Yahweh Shai. And when you're pushing that up on the body, it's not a good thing. And just because of that, Yahweh Shai could destroy you. Just because of that, Yahweh Shai could strip the spirit from you. If you call yourself being in this truth, you have to exhibit faith. You're going to have the moments where you're feeling down, where you may have doubt. But you don't push that out onto the body. Let alone, you don't do videos pushing the spirit of doubt upon others. Because Yahweh Shai sees that and therefore it's not an acceptable sacrifice. And the Lord Yahweh Shai is rough with that. Oh, they're going to do this. They're going to do this. He's just going to do that. So what? You have faith, right? You have faith and Yahweh Shai is going get to get us through it. Just like he beat in this truth. Hasn't Yahweh Shai got you through most of these situations? And if he hasn't, if you're in a situation he hasn't got you through, he will get you through it. You've got to have faith. You can't, you can't have this Bible in your hand, but you're exhibiting a man. You, you have to, you're exhibiting traits of a man that doesn't have faith. You're exhibiting traits of those that did not have faith in the wilderness. Oh, man. Now let's go to Deuteronomy. Have a show. There's, there's too much, um, obviously, yeah, it's going to annoy you. There's too much fakers in this truth, right? You can't be going out onto the, the highways and byways weekends, but when it comes for you to actually practice this during your life, you're not practicing it. Go to Jude 20, 20, I think it's 8, let's go to 8. to Deuteronomy 8 excuse me just a minute I just want to fill my cup up with some ginger tea the Lord Yahweh is dealing with men that are going to be faithful point black period and we're not saying brothers have different levels of faith I'm not saying you don't look down upon another brother because he may have less you help him out why because that brother you know he has faith he ain't faking the funk. So that's the whole thing is to the brothers that you see that are a little bit down this, but you help them out and you tell them, look, bro, read, study and pray. All right. Let's go to Deuteronomy 8th chapter. It says, all the commandments which, make sure I'm on the right one. Yes, all the commandments which. I command you this day you shall observe and do that you may live and multiply and go in and possess the land which was the land of Canaan which the Lord Yahweh Shai swear unto your fathers because it was a promise and thou shalt remember all the way which the Lord Yahweh Shai thy power led thee these 40 years in the wilderness to humble thee and to prove thee so it was to humble us right and to work on character and to prove thee it was a test it was a trial, so that means there was temptations within the wilderness. And to know what was in my heart, which Yahweh Shai already knew. It just had to be drawn out by that temptation. Right? Because temptation, what does it do? It proves a man. 
It shows a man's character. Whether that would keep his commandments or no, when he humbled thee and suffered thee to hunger and fed thee with manna. Right? The angel's bread, which thou knewest not. They never experienced that before. Neither did thy fathers know that he might make thee know that man doth not live by bread only, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of the Lord your house of man live. That's what man's supposed to live by every word that proceeds out of his mouth. And this is what Yahweh quoted. When he was tempted, you see the similarities. Yahweh was tempted in the wilderness. Was it 40 days and 40 nights? And it says, Man of not live by bread only, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of the Lord of man live. This is when he was tempted with what? Bread to eat. Right? And this is what Yahweh quoted. You live by your words. You're not, you're not living by um, the, the, the physical. You're living by your word, your integrity. That's what you're supposed to measure a man by. Not, not how much bling, jewellery, money, women he's got. Thy raiment wax not old upon, upon thee. Neither did thy foot swell. The raiment never waxed old. Forty years, can you imagine? It's like you, that's like you buying a jacket and it's fresh, just like the day you bought it for 40, 50 years. Neither did that foot swell. Your foot never swelled up. There was no bunions on your feet. These 40 years that also shall consider in thine hearts that as a man chasteneth his son, so the Lord Yahweh shall chasteneth thee. That was a chastisement. But they, they were not looking at it in, by a spiritual means. They were looking at it, oh, he's brought us into the wilderness. He's brought us out of Egypt to die. That's how they were looking at it. So there's a lot that can be learned by this, this particular chapter here. It was to prove, right? It was to prove the children of Israel. To see who believed and who didn't. Right? That was like a that was like a shifting process. It was a shifting process. Alright. So now we're gonna go to John 6, Baba Kasha. And we know John 6 is what New Testament. So this would be this was the same generation that were following Yahweh Shai. Go to John 6. Alright. Because you've got different um individuals that were coming to this truth for different reasons, different motives. Let's go to John 6. And start at we might as well start at John 6. Alright. John 6 and 5. When Yahweh Shai lifted up his eyes and saw a great company come unto him. So there was many. He saith unto Philip. When shall we buy bread that these may eat? Because there was many that were following Yahweh Shai for different reasons. And this he said prove him. And this he said to prove him. For he himself knew what he would do. Philip parts of him, 200 penny worth of bread is not sufficient for them. But every one of them may take a little. So Philip was saying, look, there's not enough bread. They're going to have to take a little, little, little crumbs, like little bits of it. The share of everyone. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon, Peter's brother, saith unto him, There is a lad here which have five barley loaves, two small fishes. But what are they among so many? So consider that two small fishes, five barley loaves, and you have to make make the men sit down. Now there was much grass in the place. So the men sat down. It was like a massive picnic. In I don't I shouldn't even use that name because that word picnic that goes back to um slavery. Alright? It actually goes back to what pick pick a nigger. Alright. And it says, bear me just a minute. It was a gathering, right? And it says, and you have to took the loaves. Okay, just a minute. And it was five thousand of them. And you have to took the loaves, which he had given thanks, and he distributed to the disciples, and the disciples to them which were sat down. And likewise of the fishes, as much as they would. Remember, there was only two fishes, five barley loaves, five thousand people. But it says it was distributed between them. So you have a shy. He was able to turn that bread and that fish into what many. Enough to feed the 5,000. Right? And it says, 
verse 12 when they were filled he said unto his disciples gather up the fragments that remain all right that nothing be lost okay so there were still fragments there was still a lot of left okay therefore they gathered them together and filled 12 baskets with the fragments of the five barley loaves which remained over and above unto them had eaten so spiritual power was displayed by Yahweh Shai then those men when they had seen the miracle that Yahweh Shai did said this of a truth that a prophet should come into the world when Yahweh Shai therefore perceived that they would come and take him by force to make him a king he departed again into the mountain himself alone so look at the um the mentality that Yahweh Shai had most people would jump right to the opportunity right they would jump right to the opportunity Yahushua did not he fled to the mountains they tried to make him a king all right but Yahushua did it wasn't it wasn't the time was Yahushua a king yeah he was a king but it wasn't the time for that then because then that wouldn't have been prophecy there was a particular pattern Yahushua had to go through the crucifixion first and when even was now come, his disciples went down into the sea and entered into a ship, went over the sea to Capernaum, and it was now dark, and Yahushua was not come to them. And the sea arose by reason of a great wind that blew. So by this time, the disciples were on the sea, night time. So when they had rowed about 5 and 20, 30 furlongs, they see Yahushua walking on the sea. And drawing nigh unto the ship, and they were afraid. You gotta imagine that. Night time, strong winds, waves, Yahweh walking up on the sea. Most people would think, oh, that's a spirit. Okay. But it was a spirit, it was the spirit of Yahweh And it says, drawing nigh unto the ship, and they were afraid. But he said unto them, It is I, be not afraid. Reassuring them, reassuring their faith. When they willingly received him, so guess what? They were assured. In other words, come into the ship, Yahushai. And immediately the ship was at the land where they went. And the day following, when the people which stood on the other side of the sea saw that there was none other boat there, save that one where unto his disciples was entered, and that Yahushai went not with his disciples into the boat, but that his disciples were gone away alone. How about they came other boats from Tiberias down to the place where they had did eat bread after the Lord had given thanks. Verse 24, when the people therefore saw Yahweh was not there, neither his disciples, they also took ship. And so they were looking for Yahweh and they were looking for the disciples. Those same multitudes that were eating that bread and that fish, right? And came to Capernaum seeking food. So they were looking it's the same, it applies to certain brothers in this truth. You're going to have people that look for you. Sometimes, for different reasons, sometimes it's not for the miracles. Right? It's for different things. There's different. You have people that have different reasons. Right? Seeking for Yahweh Shai. And when he had found him on the other side, when they had found him on the other side, they said unto Rabbi, unto him, Rabbi, when came us all hither? Right? Verse 26, and they were coming with that flatten. Okay, they were looking for him. Yahusha answered them. So you're going to have that in this truth. You're going to have people that follow you around because they might want something. But the main thing, if anyone is following you around, it's because they should want this truth. Yahusha answered them and said, Verily, as verily I say unto you, you seek me not because you saw the miracles. So Yahusha could read minds, but because you did eat the loaves, excuse me just a minute. And were filled. It's because they did eat the loaves, the physical, and were filled. They were full up, and they were thinking how they, how can they, how can they get more, or how they, how they could do the same thing that Yahweh had done. Greedy individuals. They were about the flesh. They were carnal. Yahweh knew. He knew the minds of men. Verse twenty-seven. Labor not for the meat which perisheth. Why are you labouring for the meat that perishes, the meat that vanisheth, the meat that goes off, but for the meat that which endureth unto everlasting life, which is Yahweh Shai. Bear me just a minute. Verse 
I want to make sure I'm not missing anything. All right, here we go. Let's get into this. Let's get into these um meaning of words. Type in this word meat and see what comes up. Brosis. Brosis. The act of eating in the wider sense. Corrosion. The meat that perishes. Brosis. That which is eaten through the element of the soul's food. This is the soul's food. Which refreshes the soul. Excuse me. Or nourishes and supports it. So this is this is what nourishes the soul and supports it. Not the physical bread. Not the physical... um. Not the physical meat. And it says, which endureth unto everlasting life, which the Son of Man shall give unto you, for him hath the Father sealed. When say they unto him, What shall we do that we might work the works of the Most High? Why were they asking, What shall we do that we might work the works of the Most High? Because they wanted to use it to their own goods. They wanted to use it to their own goods so they could do what Yahushua was doing. They, not, they were not about Yahweh Shai. They were about, well, how can they do what Yahweh Shai was doing? Then act like they came up with it themselves. <laughs> Yahweh Shai answered and said unto them, This is the work of the Messiah that you believe on him whom he have sent. In other words, that you believe on Yahweh Shai. They said, they said therefore unto him, What sign shall we sow then that we might see and believe thee? And what doest thou work? Do you see do you see the same pattern that was mentioned in Psalm 78 and Hebrews? Do you see that same pattern that was seen in Deuteronomy 8? They just said unto him, What size shall we stole then that we may see and believe thee? Look at the signs that were done when Yahweh broke the rocks, turned it into water, turned it, um rocks with the water and it gushed out, divided the sea. Right? Cloud by day, fire by night. It's the same generation that we may believe thee and what do is thou work. But Yahweh Shai just showed him. He just hold him privy to this. What did he just, just do? Five barley loaves and two fishes and he divided it amongst 5,000. So why were they still asking that? These were the individuals. When you go to Matthew 13 and 10, these were the same individuals that were blind. To Yahweh Shai. Verse 31. Our fathers did eat manna in the desert. So it says our fathers. So that was their fathers. This is the generation of those fathers that were unbelieve. That didn't believe. How do we know that? Because they said it. Our fathers didn't eat manna in the desert. As it is written. He gave them bread from heaven to eat. When Yahweh Shai said unto them. Verily I say unto you, Moses gave you not that bread from heaven, but my father gives you the true bread from heaven. And it wasn't really Moses, and he said Moses gave you not that bread from heaven. It was it, it was Yahweh Shai that gave him that bread. Right? And today it's the Heavenly Father that have given what? Us the true bread from heaven, which is Yahweh Shai. <clears throat> that manna was a representation of Yahweh Shai. Right? For the true bread, for the bread of the Most High, is he which cometh down from heaven and giveth life unto all the world. Excuse me just a minute. So, Yahweh Shai just said that plain. That was not speaking in um, parables. Right? He says, For the bread of the Most High is he which cometh down from heaven and giveth life unto the world, which is Yahweh Shai. So, Yahweh Shai was speaking them plainly. Okay? Plainly. Right, and it says, and Yahweh said unto them, "I am the bread of life." Right, bear me just a minute. Verse thirty-four. When said they unto him, "Lord, evermore, give us this, give us of this bread." Similar pattern to when the Samaritan woman, which she she was a heathen, said, "Give us this water to drink." Then, when Yahweh said, "I have everlasting water," you drink this water, you shall not thirst. So it's the same type of answers that you had. Right, and he said unto him, Lord, give us evermore, give us of this bread. They were still being calm, they thought Yahweh was speaking of a bread that you can eat, that you can live forever. Right, and Yahweh said unto them, I am the bread of life. Second time he told him, He that cometh to me shall never hunger, 
because you're going to be sustained and he that believe on me shall never thirst right because you're drinking out of what the rivers of living water which is this word but i said unto you right ye have also seen me and believe not just how they saw their miracles back then in the wilderness and they still didn't believe right all that the father giveth me shall come to me it's simple as that and him that cometh to me in will no wise will i cast out for i am came down from heaven not to do my own will but the will of him that sent me so yeah he wasn't even doing his own thing he was doing the will of the heavenly father and this is the father's will which you have sent me that's all which you have given me i should lose nothing but should raise it up again the last day and this is the will of him that sent me that everyone which seeth the son and believe on him may have everlasting life and i will raise him up at the last day which those men are being raised up at the last day the scriptures say that in some in corinthians um, i sent the apostles last right set them last right as it was appointed to death for some of them the pharisees the elders they were not sent last <laughs> they were there with herod they were there when yahushua was born the pharisees and the elders they were not sent last the prophets were sent last and it's going to be those that you least expect and thus and this is the will of him that sent me that everyone which See if the son, Yahweh shall believe on him, may have everlasting life, and he will raise him up at the last day. The Jews therefore murmured at him because he said, I am the bread which came down from heaven. It said they murmured. They were murmuring at Yahweh Shai in the wilderness. Right? And they were also murmuring at him 2,000 years ago after. Right? Or well, longer than 2,000 years ago. Right? Because that period from this time to them being in the wilderness is it's longer than 2,000 years right maybe 5,000 6,000 I'm not bringing it with times he said I am the bread which came down from heaven okay and this is and they said it's not this you have tried the son of Joseph carnal so they were looking at him like he's just a regular man whose father and mother we know they were looking at you have tried from a, a, a carnal perspective Oh, he's just flesh and bones. They were not looking at it from a spiritual aspect. His father and mother, we know. How is it then he saith, I came down from heaven? The house shall therefore answer and said unto them, Murmur not amongst yourselves. No man can come to me. And you got camps doing that today, murmuring amongst themselves. <laughs> okay. No man can come to me except the father which I've sent me. Draw him and I will raise him at the last. So you have the last day. So you have shy already knew. They just were not given to you have shy. Right? They were not drawn to Yahweh by the Father. It is written the prophets in the prophets and they that shall be taught of them all say, Every man therefore that have heard and have learned of the Father cometh to me. So those that have know of Yahweh, they were going to be learned for, of the Father. Not that any man have seen the Father, save he which is of the most high, he have seen the Father. Verily, verily I say unto you, he that believe on me have everlasting life. Key thing. Right? I am the bread of life. Yahweh told him plainly. Right? This is the third time he mentioned it. Your fathers did eat manna in the wilderness and are dead. They drop dead. So that never sustained them. This is the bread which cometh down from heaven. Yahweh was saying, I am the bread that comes down from heaven. That a man may eat thereof and not die and not pass away. I am the living bread. Living bread. Right? Sustainable which came down from heaven the real manna if any man eat of this bread he shall live forever and the word is bread this word is like unto what a wrong which i give unto my life and my flesh which i will give which is i will give for the life of the world the world of israel the jews therefore strove among themselves saying how can this man give his us his flesh to eat again they were thinking carnally right Thinking about cannibalism, Yahweh said unto them, Verily I say unto you, except ye eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Okay. <laughs> and what's this a partaking of Yahweh and his sufferings? Whoso eateth my flesh, and that's why during the Passover, what did Yahweh have? The wine which was representative of his blood and the bread 
which was broken, which was his body, symbolic also of his crucifixion.